the Bible is the mark of the beast. Now, on these videos, we always make a principle. To me, a principle is a course of action. It's the way God does things. It's the operation of God. So we have a principle today. It's very important. You should notice this. When the first church started, there was men of God that, and women of God that carried the living word of the living God. And they had churches. And you've seen things happen in, in these churches. Like in, what happened to Paul when he was exalted above measure? I was given a messenger from Satan. A he got a flesh. thorn in the flesh. Yeah. Right. Why did Jesus chasten him? Because he belonged to him. Because he was Jesus' son. He mm -hmm. was God's son. He was an apostle of Christ. So Jesus chastened him. And that's the way it is. Now, if you're uh, not a son and you're illegitimate, Jesus will not chasten you. All right? Now, why did he tell him in the book of Revelation when Jezebel, the prophetess, saying that she is something of God? Oh, he was going to put her in a bed and he was going to kill her and them and their children. And kill her children. Jesus would kill her children. And uh, what happened to Ananias and Sapphira? They fell down dead for lying to the Holy they Spirit. They lied to the Holy Ghost and they fell down dead. Now get this principle. What happened to Herod? He was eating of the worms. An angel smote Herod yeah. because he killed James with the sword. And he cut off John the Baptist's head and Jesus had enough of him. All right. All right. But today, can you persecute the church? No, Jesus' church, he don't have one. He don't have one. Now listen to what we're telling you. This is a true principle today. Now... When a man was committing adultery in the church at Corinth, what did the Apostle Paul say? He said, turn such a one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. For the destruction of the flesh. That maybe his soul, his spirit might be saved. Now, why don't you see any of these things today? Now, let's go through some things. All right. Jimmy Swagger. Why didn't Jimmy Swagger die? He was crying, I have sinned. Uh-huh. See, now, Jimmy Swaggart was a member of the Assemblies of God Church. Mm -hmm. It's the same church that Paul and Jan Crouch and them belonged to, the TNN people, and uh, uh, the Bakers. Many, many Pentecostals. Yeah. Tammy Baker and Jim Baker. They belonged to the Assemblies of God. It's one of your biggest Pentecostal churches. Why didn't Jimmy Swaggart fall down dead? He wore his zipper out down there in New Orleans. Because he wasn't part of Jesus' church. He did not belong to Jesus' church. So Jesus See, didn't chasten him. Jesus will not correct Satan's people. And he might kill one of them if they interfere mm -hmm. with what he's doing. But he does not go around. Do you go around correcting other people's children? No, if you do, they are going to get you big time. <laughs> now pay attention to this principle, what we're telling you. This is very powerful, very truthful, and you'll understand what's going on in the world today. We're the only Christians left. Me and a few, me and Punk and a few little Holy Ghost people here on YouTube. All right, now think about this. How many times have you seen this in the, in the... Sexual abuse in the Catholic Church by the priests. Why, why did they still, why haven't they been falling down dead or smitten with worms or, you know, why did they still continue? What do you think if that was Jesus' this church and that was some of his preachers doing that to little children, what would he do to them? He would kill them. Yes, absolutely. Graveyard dead. Yes. Now, why they've got over a billion people in the Catholic Church? A billion, two hundred million, I think. Now, why are they not punished? Because they don't belong to Jesus. Now, that's right. Now, if you'll get this answer, you'll understand. <laughs> Satan blesses them. They're his children. He blesses his children. <laughs> that's right. He blessed the Catholic Church with big buildings, billions and trillions of dollars. And they've got everything. I mean, they own everything. They can throw the election if they want to. They can do about anything they want to do, and they're above the, even the law of man. <laughs> they have paid out billions of dollars in fines, but none of them's ever been punished. Not they really. put the last Pope, Benedict, in prison over because he was supporting them so much. Well, that's under house arrest. He's living in a palace. <laughs> but they don't have to do that themselves because right. the chauffeur stole the papers. Right. And they he was convicted, and so... They had to take him off the scene, but yeah. that's very seldom that happens. All right, now here's another thing, and you wonder about these things. Now tell us about this one. Okay, Children of the Massacre, 132 men, women, and children at the Mountain Meadow Massacre. Now who was that? That was um, the Mormons. That was Brigham Young through his angel, avenging angel, John Lee. 
Yeah, they, the Mormon Church hates for you to mention the name John Lee mm -hmm. because Brigham Young sent John Lee out with some troops and they there were some other pioneers coming through Utah through their land. Mm -hmm. And they killed 132 of them and buried them. They had to dig them up a while back and give them an honorable burial. That just kills the Mormon Church. Now, why was the Mormon Church not punished for that? Because they don't belong to Jesus. They don't belong to Jesus. That's right. You see, so they went on and built big sanctuaries. If you see some of their churches, they're temples. they are so <laughs> mighty and so powerful and all. They're temples. Because they are murderers, and they don't get punished because Satan does not punish sin. No. I get that through your thick skull. That's right. When these preachers, like the other day you seen in New York, Fairfax, New York or something, these people beat a young man to death in the church to try to get them to confess their sins or something. And did anything happen to them? No. If they're corrected, the police has to come in and correct them. Uh, Jesus don't correct them. Why don't Jesus correct them? They don't belong to him. So get this. Does the Baptist belong to Jesus? No. Does the Methodist belong to Jesus? No. All right, show them something about a Methodist. Taking a Methodist. Now here's a Methodist, all right? George Bush was a Methodist, and he killed hundreds of thousands of people. He went over there and killed hundreds of thousands of the Sunni uh, Ishmael's children. They worshiped the Koran. George Bush worships the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so he went over there and killed hundreds of thousands, put them Tomahawk missiles in there on them people, and killed all them people. And did he get punished? No. No, he's out millionaire now, making speeches and doing all great things. So why didn't the Methodist church get punished for doing that? They don't belong to him. Okay, now are you But they will kill one another. <laughs> yeah, they'll kill like Cain killed Abel. Now you're satisfied that Jimmy Swagger's church, the Assemblies of God, what? don't belong to Jesus. Right. And the Catholic church, where all the priests does the evil, they don't belong to Jesus. That's right. And then the Mormon church that killed 132 people, they don't belong to Jesus. No. Now you're satisfied that the Methodist church don't belong to Jesus. That's right. Now you understand why Jesus is going to destroy the whole world. Because it doesn't belong to they him. They don't belong to him. Now he'll seal up his few children and he'll take us out of here. Yeah. And he's going to destroy the rest of them. Now if you can see this truth, you'll be blessed. Why doesn't Jesus punish sin in the churches? Why don't Jesus punish sin in the churches? Answer that. Because they're not his churches. They're not his children. He does not punish the devil's children. He might kill one of them if he interferes with us or something, but he does not correct them because they're illegitimate. You are illegitimate if you belong to any church. You're an illegitimate person. That's right. All right, now get this principle. If you ever say this is why Jesus don't do great miracles and, and things today because he ain't got nobody to do it for. See, we're the only children left on earth, there, and we're scattered, just a few little Holy Ghost children. Some of the children's preaching close the book and come to Jesus. We're preaching the Bible's an idol. It's the mark of the beast. And the little children tell you, you can't be loved by this Bible. This Bible is, it will not love you. Okay. So now remember this truth, truth right here. Because this is great. The church belongs to the devil. Get that in your mind and you'll, you'll across a great mountain, a great lake filled with alligators and sharks. Because you'll learn the truth. This is why nothing happens in the church today. Because the church belongs to the devil. Every church I know of belongs to the devil. They can do all manners of evil that they want to do, and Jesus will not correct them. You'll see corrections with Ananias and Sapphira. They lied to the Holy Ghost. Paul got a thorn in his flesh. And uh, Jesus killed Herod for killing John the Baptist and putting James and them in prison. He'll do that to his own people. He corrects us because he wants us. He don't want the flesh to control us. He wants us to be controlled by the Holy Ghost. But these churches, I don't care if you call them Baptists, Pentecostals, Catholics, Seventh-day Adventists, Church of Christ, they don't belong to God. That's why you don't see nothing happening in them, because they're of the devil, and the devil will not punish you if you sin. In fact, he kind of likes for you to sin. The devil can get on people and do anything he wants to do, and it won't be corrected, because the church belongs to the devil. Learn this principle, and you'll be way ahead of the game.